Stop! Drop! Hello everyone and welcome to the Illegal Gaming Chop Shop. I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And I need to get better at screaming. I'm afraid to scream. I'm afraid that everyone <laughs> in, my, in the you house will think I'm You crazy. need to record like a scream, like a, an intro, and just play that instead of doing it live every time. Just put in, um, I think it's funnier live i think it's gonna be funnier if we ever have more people on because then they'll have to i'll be talking normally then i'll then i'll go right into it <laughs> <laughs> okay that's the Fair. idea behind it but you're right there should be like some kind of intro with like the dmx here's the problem is that dmx is gonna try and take me down and i don't need dmx coming after me he already has enough. no i meant i meant you scream it and record yourself and then just play it back don't play the actual music oh I don't know. I, don't, I think there needs to be some form of a beat. You know what? We'll talk about this later. Because right now, <laughs> we should be talking about the game that we have for today. And everyone should know what it is because it's in the title. I want to talk about Mortal Kombat. Zen, I have a history with Mortal Kombat. But just to let everyone know, quickly tell what you kind of know about Mortal Kombat. Uh, so I played a little bit of the one on the Sega Genesis. Mm -hmm. uh and then i played street fighter like a real human being That's and then i played injustice when it came out that sounds about right so i'm gonna kind of we're just gonna do because there's no real gameplay for it i did want to kind of go through mortal kombat is a weird <laughs> fighting game in that it's probably the only western fighting game that's made and played anymore can you think of any other one made by like actual like um, this is because uh, NetherRealm Studios, as it is known now, but it started in Midway, is a Chicago studio and it's always been in Chicago. So it's always been made in the West. But it's, I think, the only fighting game left that isn't like an indie developer that's actually a big fighting game developer. Killer Instinct? Killer Instinct. You're right. And that's that started with oh, fuck. I know Iron Galaxy does it now. It used to be Rareware. Used to be, yeah, Rareware started it, and then uh, the new current one was made by, I don't remember, I want to say it was, I can't remember, it, I just know Iron Galaxy did it. Uh, Double Helix and Iron Galaxy. There you go, Double Helix started it, and then uh, Iron Galaxy continued after, I think, I want to say season three? But yeah, that's the thing, is that it's Killer Instinct, and it's this. There's that's it, and everything else is kind of uh, mainly in Japan because that's where a lot of fighting games are played uh, in arcades nowadays. Like Japan still has a thriving arcade scene, and we don't really have that over here. Anyone that we have, not not in the way Japan does it anyway. Not even close. Yeah, it's no no debate. No debate. They have fucking cards to put into their arcade machines so they can keep playing fighting games. It's something else, man. But yeah, Mortal Kombat stands as like one of the very few, not counting Killer Instinct, of Western fighting games that's still kind of played a buttload of and has survived over the years by constantly just making games. And it's a, it's a fighting game series that, make no bones about it, has never had any respect until may, not even current day, I would say. <laughs> has Eddie ever had any respect from people who play the Japanese style of fighting games? And it's for, I think, pretty clear reasons why. <laughs> but it's still, uh, if you were to ask me straight up, what's my favorite fighting game? It would be a Mor the Mortal Kombat series. There's like so no you're like the opposite of uh, Rockerai. Yeah, Rockerai. Like who like would sooner rip his own fingernails out than praise Mortal Kombat? Exactly, Rockerai. Who would rather? Well, there's a lot of reasons why everything. Let me put it to you this way: <laughs> everything that Mortal Kombat stands for is the exact opposite of what Rockerai is stands for. <laughs> So I don't like blame him for it. It would be like it would be like expecting me to be really cool with like something that like is it's like you know what I can't think of it right now. But I understand why. Let me put it that way. When people talk down Mortal Kombat, I understand why. But let's start. So for people who don't know the first Mortal Kombat game, when it was released, it used it was different from other fighting games because it used a. What is that called? It was basically like FMV, where the fighters were actually real dudes, but they were like skinned and like Donkey Kong Country, but with real dudes. Yeah, pretty much. They were. It was like uh, I don't know if F FMV is the right term, but it was literally like recordings of actual people were the sprites. Yes. That they just put in. Exactly, and um, 
it was supposed to be a video game based based off of Jean Claude Van Damme, and then he eventually pulled from the project, but they continued. That's why if you ever wonder why Johnny Cage has a nut punch from Bloodsport, it's because that was originally supposed to be Jean Claude Van Damme, and that was his signature move, was doing the splits and then punching you in the nuts. <laughs> So the fighting style, I think it was like, it's high kick, low kick, high, you know, it's very basic, like four button. No, it's four buttons that are the attacks. And this is the thing that will always be the sticking point for anyone who's into fighting games. There's a block button. So you don't. Yeah, that's the big one for everybody. That's the big one for everyone. You don't hold back to block. There's a specific button for it. And I feel like whenever it gets brought up, the reason why more people are into Injustice 2 over Mortal Kombat is that block button. It, for whatever reason, it is always something that's been like a point of contention. An interesting point on the block button. Uh, when Scorpion first came out in the original Injustice, uh, he was a DLC character in the first game. And he had the same teleport that he has in the Mortal Kombat games. But because uh, there's no hold back to block in Mortal Kombat, you have the button blocking. Well, Injustice doesn't have button blocking. It, it's back to block like Street Fighter. So that teleport was like the most broken shit for the longest time because you couldn't react to it. It, it was a button made for a block butt game, but it was in a, a walk button fighter, and it just did not work. And they didn't even kind of try to change it at all until like, they nerfed the shit out of him way later on. That sounds about right. You know, that's one of the things you can always tell if someone's new to Mortal Kombat. They don't know how to deal with teleporters. That's always why, and almost every character has a teleport of some kind. Like, they either jump off screen. The most famous one is, of course, Scorpion. But yeah, block button will always be the number one thing that will be, that's, if you're used to fighting games, it's very hard to adapt to the fighting button. And in a time when it was released, a lot of, like, a lot of the characters had the exact same, like, fighting style in that they're if you punched with johnny cage it was the same as Liu kang it's the same as a scorpion it was the same with sub-zero the only thing that was different was that there was a shit ton of special moves and the special moves could be chained in such a way and that was kind of how you did fighting so it was like one of the it was the first fighter that was literally like check out all this special shit that's all you really cared about <laughs> right so its combo system has always been very weird, especially the first Mortal Kombat. And here's the thing that probably has kept it going throughout the entire years is that at the end of the fight, there's a fatality. And if you don't know what a fatality is, it is once you have beat the opponent, you basically input a specific command from a specific like set of buttons and different button movements from like a specific standing point, And then your dude will, sh will walk up to the opponent and kill them in very specific ways. And that is the one thing that Mortal Kombat is really kind of known for. More so than, I think, the fact that it's a fighting game. Yeah. Uh, also, I think, I I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm pretty sure Mortal Kombat is still the only, f or, and Injustice, just Netherrealm in general, are the only um, 2D fighters that have high hitboxes. That, like, moves that can never hit a ducking person, no matter what, even when they're grounded. Yes, I want to say that's true as well. Like, Mortal Kombat does a lot of things that are just weird compared to a lot of other fighting games, which could be uh, hard to get into for a lot of people. But yeah, that's kind of Mortal Kombat 1. If you ever wonder why we have the ESRB, it's because of Mortal Kombat 1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, pretty much. There was a whole court case. If anyone has ever seen the transcripts of Nintendo and Sega going to the Supreme Court. Do you want to know how bad Nintendo of America was going after uh, uh, Sega of America? It's in court. You have the representative for Nintendo of America blaming Sega for the violence in video games. <laughs> you have them going like, oh man, look at Sega over here. They released a, a, a blood, we've released a bloodless version of Mortal Kombat. Meanwhile, they got the full gory version. They released this pornography game called Night Trap. They're just like a bad company all around. Like, come on, we're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> we're the good guy we're the good guy you should really look up that transcript because it's hilarious that they get that these companies were so petty that they could not literally get together for one moment this one thing that could decide the entire fate of video games they're like nah fuck it we're gonna still go for it <laughs> 
But yeah, Mortal Kombat 1, it's very basic if you play it now. If you play it in arcades, it's borderline impossible to win because this was during its... Midway is very good in their arcade games of doing one thing, and that is making you put in more quarters. So if you can somehow beat Mortal Kombat 1 in arcades with one quarter, I consider you a god. It seems impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's how all the old arcade games were made. Yeah. They were just designed... To, it, they were like gotchas where, where nowadays with a gotcha you just get shit on all the time old arcade games were made to beat the shit out of you over and over again so you had to keep pulling extra chances to try yep and that's kind of the this kind of format would kind of stick they would add mortal kombat 2 mortal kombat 2's big thing is that they would add this is where they added uh friendships babalities and animalities or I want to say animalities might have been, you know, animalities is in um, Mortal Kombat 3, actually. But that's kind of, the, you see the improvements of where they're kind of putting their stuff in. They also added more characters, there's more special moves. It's very much a special moves type of fighter, which is weird to think about uh, a fighting game that's literally relying on you just doing... A lot of people do Hadoukens because, you know... That's fun to do, and if you don't know what you're doing. But in Street Fighter 2, for example, if you just go in there, you can actually do combos. Mortal Kombat doesn't really (laughs) believe in that. (laughs) So it's more like, no, just do a lot of special moves, and you'll get them eventually. And that's actually the legit way to play. Um, Mortal Kombat 3, this is another thing where you start to see, like, maybe the, the people who behind the fighting system are trying things that are not not like other fighting games so in mortal kombat 3 they added another button i I know you don't know what the other button is but you want to guess what this button did zen uh i have absolutely no idea it was a run button oh (laughs) so just to let you know there was a, a a punch button a high punch button a kick button a high kick button a block button and a run button so you would press all these buttons and one button was specifically to run which is something that and it wasn't it wasn't like how you dash forward now it's literally your character would just run across the stream the stream and also now i want to say there was more of a combo system so if you ever see like a uh, marvel um not marvel um mortal camp mortal kombat 3 if you see actual legit people who know how to play that game it looks kind of like a 2d weird ass version of ultimate marvel versus capcom because it just like it (laughs) looks incomprehensible how the fuck any of this is even possible by human hands yeah that those games remind me a lot of like a 2d version of a 3d fighter they have a whole lot of 3d fighter mechanics but they just operate on the 2d plane yes and that is also it's funny you mentioned that because now we head into Mortal Kombat 4. This is... A lot of people will say Mortal Kombat 3 is where the early Mortal Kombat games peaked. Because when we get to 4, that's when they actually make the jump to 3D. And that's with Mortal Kombat 4. And it's it's very weird. It's something that you don't see a lot of fighting games do. Like, for example, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5 all share the same thing. And which is that they're 2D fighters. There's, like, no fighting the fact that that's what they are. Like, they never try. The way they try and, like, advance the fighting system is that they just try and advance it on a 2D plane. And even Street Fighter 4 is a 2D fighter that's in 3D. Even Tekken, for example, never really went 2D except for maybe Street Fighter X Tekken, but that's a Street Fighter game. So you see what I'm saying here, right? They tried for whatever reason the developers behind it felt like you know 3d fighters is a thing i think we kind of got what we can do with these weird sprites in 2d so it's time to change the the system so they tried and mortal kombat 4 is actually a a, from what i remember it's a god-awful game (laughs) yeah i think a lot of those middle area mortal kombat games were not super well received I know uh, they they brought in DC for Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe to try to compete with Marvel versus Capcom, and it was just a shit show. Yeah, and the funny thing is that's that's a while no that's miles away at this point. But let me get to the next point because this is where you'll start to see some things that go injustice. The 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 base the skin for injustice starts in Marvel. Marvel versus DC would be a completely different game. 
uh, Mortal <laughs> Kombat versus DC is kind of where you see some of the beginnings of the Injustice era in Mortal Kombat 9. But before we get there, I want to say is that the next game is Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. And this is where it starts to do something that no other fighter has been able to do well, except for maybe Tekken with its weird-ass volcano endings, is that it actually tries to tell a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Tekken story is okay. Um... Tekken story is, is fun because it almost ends with someone always getting thrown into a volcano. <laughs> Yeah, uh, per- Persona Arena has a story, sort of. It does, but it's also Guilty like... Guilty Gear has one if you're willing to try and actually figure out how the fuck to read it. Yeah, but maybe Guilty Gear has the most story <laughs> out of all fighters. Street Fighter has the most, I think, convoluted storyline of all Street Fighters in that I think 3 is technically in the future and 4 and 5 are prequels. Uh, Street Fighter is a game where... You tell someone, "Hey, did you know this has a story?" And they go, "What?" Yeah. And then so that that should tell you all you need to know about the Street Fighter's story. And then you go like, "No, you don't understand. Evil Ryu was a character, but then he was able to take out the Dark Hado, and now we have Oni, which is just the hard Dark Hado taking the form of Ryu." And it's no, like, no, Oni is Akuma in Super Saiyan form. Oh my! Uh, I mean the the new um the new guy. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, that's the guy I meant. Oni is different. But you see what I mean is that Street Fighter story is not really its selling point. If you kind of give his name it is to... Kage. Oh, Kage, there you go. Kage. But the kind of selling point for Tekken and Street Fighter has never been its story, even though I think Tekken has some really cool story beats in it and Guilty Gear has an anime story, so It's basically yeah. an anime, yeah. Yeah. Mortal Mortal Kombat is telling a story through actual like gameplay elements in which it's different like deadly alliance is where they kind of start the story this is where uh Liu kang is killed like that mortal kombat deadly alliance starts with Liu kang getting fucking murdered by shang sung and quan chi like his head gets like <laughs> twisted and then he's not seen for the entire game because he's legit dead <laughs> that's like if um ryu is ki- like shot at the beginning of street fighter 5 and you don't see him for the entire game <laughs> But then the next game, which is, uh, damn it, which is, uh, fuck me, I cannot believe I'm forgetting. I'm trying to not look at it because I want to, I remember, Deception. This is where there's actually like a legit like 3D, it's an open world game with a fighting game in it. There's like an entire like action adventure mode where you go in there and you like complete quests from people and then you talk to the characters and you go through the entire mythology of like going from Mortal Kombat 1 to the other ones. And it's a 3D fighter at this point and it's like using a weird system where there's three fighting styles for every character where they have two of them are martial arts and the last one is a weapon. So every character has like and so the juggles are is that you're literally switching styles and that's kind of the fighting game of it still a block button. And I, this is probably the ones I played the most of, and also they're not the greatest of the games because they kind of feel like, kind of like what I assume Tekken is, but not as good as Tekken. Like imagine Tekken, but with a block button, and so it's not as good as Tekken. I think doesn't Tekken have a block button? Does it? Well, it's a three D fighter. I always thought that it was you hold back in Tekken. I oh, never... you do hold back in Tekken. Am I think maybe I'm thinking of Soul Calibur then. No, Soul Calibur does have a block button because you're going to need it to deal with all the bullshit that Soul Calibur throws at you. <laughs> yeah, Soul Calibur is kind of retarded. It in is. a good way, in a good way. It's 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 like stupid crazy, not yeah, stupid for playing it. It's very fun. I just don't think I could ever like get super deep serious into it because then I'd get angry. Right. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about it. Anyway. This is where the story starts to form up, and then you get a very bad game, which is Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Up until this point, they've been kind of making their own fatalities. In Armageddon, they do what is something which is called, like, build a finisher, where you, like, uh, you start the fatality, and it's like, okay, now you get to kill him in different ways, but all the ways look exactly the same, so every character basically has the exact same finisher, and it kind of sucked, and Armageddon is bad for that reason it also is the smash brothers ultimate of the series in which they combine all like a hundred and something mortal Kombat characters into one game (laughs) oh good god i can't imagine that any of them were well built 
No, it it's kind of not because you have like characters that are like fucking Goro and the Dragon King Onaga who are big fuckers and they're not meant to like they have super armor and they're not meant to be fought seriously. <laughs> so like they're in the game and they're boss characters and they're broken as shit and they're super easy to beat. I mean, it's super easy to beat other people with. So it's not very balanced. Um, and then this is where Mortal Kombat versus DC shows up. And this is where you start to see kind of the beginnings of what will become Mortal Kombat 9 and what will later be Injustice. And it is at this point that Midway is kind of on the outs. Midway through Midway was super popular during the arcade days, but they never really kind of knew what to do once consoles hit. So by this point, it's near the end. It's the 360 era. They've made a lot of bad investments. They were going to make a game called This Is Vegas. Do you remember this is Vegas. I do not remember this is Vegas. It was supposed to be an open world game set in Vegas. And when they were showing it off, like, I don't understand how this game was supposed to come together. They were literally showing like, here's one part of the game and here's another part of the game. They're not currently together because we can't make them work together. <laughs> so we're going to show you in <laughs> separate like terminals and different executables. And they spent a lot of money on it. And that's eventually what kind of caused uh, Midway to fall that and a lot of just bad investments like they're the reason they're they made the stranglehold game that didn't turn out very well uh the kind (laughs) of only thing that ever worked for them was the mortal Kombat series so warner brothers now in kind of a good relationship with um the the people behind mortal Kombat are like whatever dude we'll buy you we now own the rights to mortal Kombat, and then that's how nether realm studios was formed the original dev team which was started by Ed Boon, and I want to say it's John Tobias. At this point, Ed Boon is the only one in charge of the entire Mortal Kombat series because Tobias has moved on to another uh, company at this point. If I'm remembering correctly, I might not be. But anyway, um, they now are owned by no- uh, Warner Brothers. This is where Netherrealm Studios is formed, and they make Mortal Kombat 9. And Mortal Kombat 9 is the first Mortal Kombat game, and I want to say its entire history that is actually kind of praised for its fighting system. It goes back <laughs> to a 2D fighter. There's no multiple styles. It goes back to the original. So story-wise, because this is kind of important, Armageddon is the end point of the Mortal Kombat universe because at this point, uh, a, bla- a guy named Blazed, who was in the first Mortal Kombat, is basically killed everybody, and Armageddon is here, and Shao Kahn is about to basically... it. The Mortal Kombat 9 opens with all those 100 characters I mentioned all fucking dead. The only two left are Shao <laughs> Kahn and Raiden. So then Raiden sends his medallion back to Mortal Kombat 1 as a warning to say, hey, you need to stop this from happening. And so basically the entire series reboots by Raiden saying, this is the worst timeline possible. I need to go warn my past self so that this shit doesn't happen again. And so... Mortal Kombat 9 basically, in essence, gets reset, but is still kind of in fiction. And um, that's an entire whole thing to get into, which I won't get into now, because then we would be here for like three hours as I try and explain the mythos of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I think that might be a lore story for another day. Exactly. But here's the fighting. The fighting is very much a 2D game. I really like it. It, the fatalities have also been much better. This is also the start of where you start to see some weird DLC characters. Freddy Krueger is a character, is is a DLC character, and he's kind of the start of what would be their future DLC plans going forward. But it still has the block button. It still has all of that. It's a great game. If you've never played Mortal Kombat 9, if you're not into fighting games, but like story, you should check out that story because it's really interesting and it's really fun. And you'll also kind of get to know the fighting system. The only thing that sucks about it is that the story mode will occasionally be like, play Shang Tsung and now you're going to fight three dudes at once. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know how to play this character and also I'm getting my ass kicked. This is fucking hard. Why did this? Why is this so fucking hard? Uh, but after Mortal Kombat 9, we finally reach Injustice. Now that they're cool with Warner Brothers, they've literally made a Batman who just plays kind of like uh, uh, Sub-Zero. So they go, here's Injustice 1. Zen, why don't you tell me about the fighting system for first Injustice? Because I need to take a quick breather. <laughs> okay. So Injustice 1 is... 
sort of the appeal to the masses version of Mortal Kombat, almost. Uh, I think most people, other than maybe Liu Kang, Raiden, Scorpion, and Sub-Zero, maybe not even Liu Kang and Raiden. I know Scorpion and Sub-Zero people could pick out, but other than that, they don't know too many Mortal Kombat characters. It doesn't have the same level of like mass appeal, obviously, as DC superheroes. So they went ahead and they made Injustice, which uh, I, I guess, guess this was supposed to be like some kind of DC event. Because they made a tie-in comic series and all this shit. It, it so, has its own lore. Yeah, so let me just... I'll come in here for the lore bits of this. The Injustice timeline is a different timeline from the DC in which... Uh, the basic setup is that uh, the Joker has made Superman kill Lois Lane. So Superman's mind breaks and he kills Joker. And this is an official current like timeline in DC that's still ongoing. Like it's the comics are still being made, even though Injustice 2 is no longer uh, being updated and stuff. But there you go. Yeah. So it has mostly Mortal Kombat mechanics. It has Mortal Kombat's inputs, which are different than a traditional fighting game input. Uh, Mortal Kombat like inputs are generally what's called command normals. It's usually directions and buttons and less full motions. So, for example, a Mortal Kombat input might be like back, forward, and a button. Whereas a Street Fighter game, you're going to go from back half circle all the way to forward or you know down quarter circle to forward. Um so it uses all of their inputs. It has a lot of command normals. Uh, but it has hold back to block, which was a big kicker, like we said earlier, for a lot of people with Mortal Kombat. Injustice brought that back in, did away with the block button, hence all the issue with Scorpion. Uh, it kickstarted its own little lore. And I, I don't know how big Mortal Kombat got uh, tournament-wise. I, I, I never really paid attention. Mm-hmm. But I know that Injustice got pretty uh big ish for a while i know nether realm was pushing it pretty hard i know ed boon uh did a lot of he showed up did a lot of stuff for it um generally i would say that injustice is sort of like the the mainstream enjoyed version of mortal kombat that they're very similar but a lot of that extreme stylization that can turn people off of mortal kombat is not in injustice yeah you and can't run, there's no button block, there's none of that stuff. Yes, and you can still run in Mortal Kombat. Um, another thing that I'll say is that uh, when they did Mortal Kombat versus DC, that is the first and only T-rated Mortal Kombat game. And it was specifically because um, DC characters, they can't have uh, Scorpion ripping off subs, uh, not Sub-Zero, um, a Superman's head, because that would be kind of uncool <laughs> to show to kids. Right. Uh, the funny thing is that the Joker's fatality in that game, which is getting shot in the face by a pistol, Shang Tsung would get it in Mortal Kombat 9, and you would shoot them in the face, and it would be uncensored. So it would literally be like their head was, it would fucking explode, and the camera would like spin three times around the head. <laughs> but yeah, the I think that's accurate, because Mortal Kombat 9 had a very small tournament scene, from what I remember. It was never as... It was kind of the, the, the like a little big toe in the water of like okay this is now a competent enough fighter we're gonna give you like a tiny room you'll be the first thing you see on the final day and that's kind of it you're supporting your community which is good it does something more than nintendo in which they actually give money to the people who win (laughs) yes that's true i will always i will always give as much as people have shit on them they have always done right to the by their community They've always been very much like, we're going to support this tournament with our own money. You know, well, we don't, you know, nothing is blocking them. They're very supportive, which is uh, the opposite of a lot of, especially in the wake of like fucking Fighter Z not probably going to be in any more tournaments and Nintendo continually being weird about Smash Brothers. It is nice to see a studio kind of going out of the way going like, no, you should definitely play this. It's very nice that you do. Yeah, yeah, it's, maybe go as far as to say that NetherRealm is the most supportive studio uh, as far as this kind of stuff goes. Um, I know that Bandai is kind of involved, but they kind of like to do their own thing. Mm-hmm. So you don't really see them get too involved with like grassroots tournaments. They don't really push that too much. They like to do their own stuff. Capcom likes to do its pro tour. 
uh, and it it'll donate to specific tournaments that that house whatever they want to do for the pro tour. I guess they pick out a set amount of tournaments throughout the year, and they make it a pro tour tournament that you can if you score in that, then you do better for their overall rankings or whatever. But I think NetherRealm is generally just like, yeah, man, let's fucking have some fucking tournaments, like whatever. Yeah, let's do it. They've always had a very nice feel to them, which is nice. And it might also be just because they're from Chicago. So that kind of like, there's usually a barrier between us and the Japanese uh, game devs just because there's a language barrier there. But with them, it's very much like, you guys grew up here. I know the fuck, I know Ed Boon knows fucking English. He screams, get over here. He's the, he's Scorpion. So there's a lot, it's a lot easier to communicate, I feel. Anyway. Yeah. Well, the evidence of that is watch Ono talk on stage at Evo every year. Yeah, watch Ono talk. <laughs> it's, it's something else. He he has foregone the interpreter, and his English has not gotten any better. No, I also say uh, to be fair, Harada is also I feel a very good. Um, I like the way he speaks to the community. <laughs> Harada, yeah, yeah. What what is that uh, famous quote? Don't ask me for anything. Don't ask me. I, for I think so. Yeah. Well, well, what what's the one where they someone like asked for Negan in Tekken and he responded like, "What are you idiot?" <laughs> and then now he's in it. <laughs> that's pretty good. Like that's another good guy. That's like, you know, that it exists on all sides, but it is kind of like a rare treat you kind of get nowadays. But yeah, that's Injustice One and. Now the Nether Realm makes two fighting games. It's Nether, it's Injustice and it's Mortal Kombat. And the way that they see Injustice, it, oh, Injustice also doesn't have any fatalities. It does have some really fucked up shit in the story mode where like Superman is lobotomizing a young boy, but <laughs> that's not a yeah. fatality. Uh, yeah, it, they're they have super attacks that feasibly should be fatalities on the people that they use them on, yeah. but because it's T rated, they get back up. Yeah, exactly. Like in Injustice 1, Superman's super attack was he literally punched you into orbit, and then he punched you back down onto the planet. Yes. And he'll do that shit to, like, Batman, but they'll just get up. And then this also introduces something that's uh, and a lot of people, like, feel weird about, is that characters will stand right the fact, right, they'll stand right up, and then they'll kneel down to say, like, they've been beaten. Yeah, they, they stand up to return to, like, at post-animation, they stand up to, like, return to neutral and then they fall down <laughs> Yeah, have lost. For some reason, it just bugs the shit out of a lot of people. <laughs> but yeah, that's Injustice 1. And then the game after that was Mortal Kombat X, which is... So now that Nether Realms is making a T-rated game, they like to think of Injustice as their like ability to kind of like, all right, we're not making any fatalities. But the second we're working back on Mortal Kombat, we're going to let all that weird shit fly. And so we're going to get even weirder and more disgusting fatalities. So if you ever wonder why are they so gruesome, it's because literally them doing the DC game and not being able to do any of that gruesome stuff, they go, okay, we can't do this here, but wait until it's basically that moment of like, wait until I can beat your ass or something. Basically, they're no, not saying it, it builds up (laughs) over time. Yes. They don't have an outlet for it. Yeah. They're no nut. November is the injustice series. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so then when mortal Kombat comes out it just goes flying everywhere and here's the thing that's kind of the differentiator in mortal Kombat x is that there's three fighting styles and this is something that would kind of go into injustice 2 the only difference is that you could select your fighting style in mortal Kombat x and injustice 2 you cannot do that you had to do something else, which we'll go into. The story continues on from Mortal Kombat 9. I think the only thing that was a bummer is that the PC version of Mortal Kombat X launched fucking broken. And that was the version I bought. Ooh. Because at that point, I did not have a, a PS4 or a Xbox One, I guess. But I would never. I was never going to buy one of those, so... Until I ended up buying one. Anyway, the point is, is that I had to buy it on PC, so I got it basically... A, really bad version of that game that kind of leaves it in a weird sour note like i think the version is fixed now but it's also kind of too late the the fighting in essence fought exactly the same as mortal kombat 9 the dlc characters were fucking weird because they had like leather thick leather face the predator 
uh alien <laughs> the xenomorph from <laughs> alien uh carl weathers who was a skin for Jax. If you don't know who Carl Weathers is, he's the black guy in uh, Predator who was the friend of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He is also the black dude in uh, Arrested Development who keeps ask- telling Tobias like cheap advice to be an actor. Fantastic, man. And he was in the Mortal Kombat X. But that's really all I got to say about Mortal Kombat X. It kind of just builds up on the fighting system. The fatalities are pretty good. The new characters are kind of whatever. They have the son of Scorpion in it, and he's kind of the funnest character to play, I feel. And Injustice 2 is also... A, not Injustice 2. Mortal Kombat X is also where I feel... Is where I first learned about Sonic Fox. Because that dude literally just ran rough shot over that entire tournament scene. Yeah, he tends to do that. Yeah. That was kind of... I don't know if you've... Uh, when people exactly heard of it but when he started doing that in uh in just not injustice 2 i keep wanting to say injustice 2 because he eventually did the same thing to injustice 2 right he did yeah um what he did in mortal kombat x with his character aaron black it was literally like i would watch it and it'd be like there's literally no one who's on this dude's level the only time they beat him it feels like is when he's fucking up or when he's specifically playing around and that's kind of what i yeah the You'll you'll continually get an issue with Sonic Fox where he's a top level player easily, and he'll play characters that aren't like super great because he's a top level player, and then that will inevitably spawn all the fucking like Twitter galaxy brains who are like, oh oh I thought you said this character was bad oh but Sonic Fox wants I was like shut the fuck up like Sonic Fox could do whatever he wants. Yeah, there's a difference between a. Oh, oh good player can make a bad character look good yeah a player on that caliber can make anybody look good like he played in injustice 2 um he played captain cold for a while who everybody was like this character is absolute dog shit like you should never play captain cold well he did and he did really well with him and so everyone was of course automatically like proof that you know tier lists are meaningless and then a bunch of people picked up captain cold and got absolutely fucking destroyed because it turns out to play a really shitty character like and do well against top tier characters you really have to be like on the level yeah cuz let me tell you i tried to get captain cold when if when justice 2 first came out and i quickly switched to the doctor cuz i just could not handle captain cold fucking like you have to be like aware you have to have a lot of situational awareness and you have to have like just know when the right time is to move cuz if you fuck up you're just going to get your shit rocked constantly yep and it's more than, like, he's a character that's more than just situational awareness. You have to have ridiculously good reactions to, to know, like, when your opponent trips one of your traps or when they're moving somewhere that they shouldn't be and you know you can restrict that space. Uh, you, you have to be able to do that quick. And that's I, I, that's the thing about Injustice 2 and maybe NRS games in general because I, I think Mortal Kombat tends to be a bit more aggressive than Injustice is. Um, but it's a thing that bugs me when I see people complain about Injustice, like, oh... It's, they're just spamming and zoning. It's like, no, they're not. You fucking mongrel. Like, it takes a lot of reaction and like understanding to play certain characters in that game and know how to restrict airspace at what time. Yeah. Like, you'll see a really good Superman player hover at about three quarters of the screen away because if you ever leave the ground, then he can immediately just blow you up for like half your life. Like and that's some, not something where it's like, oh, he won't come in and fight me. What a what a, a bitch. He's just running away. It's like no, he's just staying at a situation where he is at advantage, but he still has to outplay you to get it to work. Yeah, and that's the thing. And also now we'll just say this is now Injustice Two. Injustice Two is um, what is the kind of differences between this is where they kind of added weird customization to stuff, but the basic fighter of it. Like, a lot of people, I feel, kind of ignored the customization stuff, except for if they were, like, goofing Well, around. the customization stuff, uh, you could turn off and just not play with it on yeah. for, like, a tournament standard where the customization was mostly just... It did affect, like, character stats, but it was mostly just for fun. Um, nobody took it seriously, like, as a meta mode or anything. Yeah. I, I got one of my wins using that mode because I had really good armor on my Dr. Fate. <laughs> so I was able to win. <laughs> And then you quickly said, let's switch to the regular. 
Let's not use armor anymore. <laughs> no, because my dude was fucking stacked. Because <laughs> a lot. Of, this is where the thing that I think is kind of cool is that uh, Nether Realms builds their games specifically so that people who aren't used to fighting games can have a lot of fun playing it. Because there's a lot of single player stuff. So, so a person like me who doesn't like to go online, I can p- play all the single player stuff and I can like build up my armor. And then a dude like you can just go. This is like pointless. Let me just go straight to online fighting. And right. Yeah. And it's. It's two different experiences, but neither one that's really less valid than the other. Yeah. And you can totally, like, I feel if you know enough of the single-player stuff, you can play a friend who's better than you, and you can get better with the game. Like, I got better in Injustice 2 by just constantly losing to you, by constantly having to fight fucking Superman over and over and over again. (laughs) Yeah, they nerfed my my boy Aquaman. I really loved him in the first game. Did they? They nerfed the shit out of him in the second game, yeah. Good. In the first game, he was fucking wild. (laughs) Really? He was so good. Yeah, he was so good. So you know that move in Injustice 2 where he, like, stabs you with the trident over and over again? Yes. That shit was fucking safe. You could just do it. That's... So And it did, like, it did like 20% chip damage. So if, ridiculous. if you had them in the corner where they couldn't, like, back get backed up off of it, you could just do it for as much bar as you had. Like, if they were at 50% life and you had three bars, it was over. Man, that is hilarious. <laughs> he was so good. Uh, they took away a lot of his combo options, though. They they tried to make him like a an attrition character, like a, more of a zoner where he kind of wears you down over time instead of outright killing you. Mm-hmm. But then his tools weren't super great for that. So I mean, he wasn't he wasn't bad in Injustice Two, but he was like top five in the first game. Mm, I see now. But yeah, and I. Yeah. I really liked playing Injustice 2 a bunch. A lot of it also had to do with the fact that you bought it, so at least I knew someone that I could play against <laughs> and get better. And so that's... one thing that I like about uh, Injustice in general is that everything is very well defined. Like, in a game like Marvel, I love Marvel. Like, that's maybe my favorite fighting game ever, is Marvel 3. Mm-hmm. But that shit's fucking crazy. It is. Like, there's shit everywhere, and the entire screen is fair game all the time. Like, imagine Dragon Ball Fighter's Super Dash, except you have to actually know how to play a video game in order to use it. If you're good at Marvel 3, you could be anywhere, whenever the fuck you want, at all times. So nowhere is ever safe. Uh, Injustice is a much slower game, yes. but I think that that's a good thing, because the screen, you can kind of divide the screen into more of like a quadrants of where, okay, you've got the upper left, the bottom left, the upper right, the bottom right, and the center... And you know what tools you have that can threaten which area of the screen based on where you are right now. So it allows you to play a little bit slower and make some more educated decisions when it comes to how you're going to like control screen real estate and when you do and when you don't want to push buttons. Uh, think of it like Street Fighter footsies, but full screen, anywhere on the screen. Whereas Marvel, you're like, I am going to put hitboxes on the screen and you are either going to block them or they are going to hit you and we are going to keep doing that until one of us is dead. <laughs> Marvel 3 is like if someone took uh, the Mugen engine and then you remember when all those crazy characters are all on the field and they're like throwing bullshit at you. What if that was actually a game that you had to actually learn how to play? Yeah, like it. Marvel is a crazier, uh, more skillful version of Dragon Ball Fighter. I, I, I don't want to say skillful because it's hard to define skill. Um but it certainly takes more capability to do things in that game. Yeah. Fighter says the same thing where like people will go like it's hard for me to read what's currently going on. But I feel like fighters if you look at it enough times, you'll eventually understand what's going on in the screen. For Marvel 3, I had to watch maybe 3 days straight of the Evo tournament for me to finally go by the end of like Okay, I think I'm kind of understanding what's going on. I see the doom. I see what's going to happen next. I see the zero. He sure is <laughs> he sure is everywhere. Uh, I understand Soul Spear is just constantly being blasted everywhere. <laughs> but it yeah, takes that, a lot. That's, Injustice is very different from that. Whereas Injustice is a lot of... If you know your character, you know your buttons, you know the stage, because Injustice, every stage is different. Because they have those interactables yeah. that are, if they hit, they're unblockable most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. Um, so... If you know the screen and the stage and your buttons, like you have to have a, a solid knowledge of everything that's going on. But having that information helps you a lot in a match. Whereas in something like 
fighters where it's like, well, okay, I'm going to super dash, and if you block it, I'm going to vanish. And then if you block vanish, I'm going to make you block for 45 seconds while I call both my assists, and then I'm going to vanish again. Yeah, it's full-on craziness. And Injustice 2 is basically the opposite of that in that it's very much like slow, and you kind of figure out, you zone, but it's very much just one person, and you're just kind of doing your thing. Yeah, it's the it's the chess man's fighting game. You, every move is very calculated in that game. Yes, and it also has the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in it. So, give it yes, some. Yes, it does. Give it some form of fucking respect, please. <laughs> Anyone who's willing to go like, no, we need the TMNT, and they need their kind of original designs is worth something, in my mind. And so, with Injustice Two, we have the current game coming up. Mortal Kombat 11. I don't know if it has like some kind of acronym towards it, but I don't think so. I think it's just MK11. It's MK11, and it's coming out. It's coming out really soon. It comes out in April, and I'm just sitting here wondering how is it gonna go? Because I feel like usually around they usually like show the trailer they did at round E3, so I'm kind of curious whether or not they're gonna kind of try and do a new form of a fighting system that's the one thing i'm just unclear about because they are one of the very few fighting game studios who are willing to go like no i think it's time to just try something completely new and sometimes it fails and sometimes it doesn't so i'm interested to see what kind of happens next i know for i mean it got a really good reception when that trailer came out i mean that trailer is uh, awesome because it's just fucking dudes dying <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I mean, that was probably the second most exciting reveal of the night when that came out. And I mean, it's not fair because you can't compete with Smash Brothers. Smash has gotten too big. It's it's its own, it's like... It's insane. Yeah, it's its own living, breathing organism now. You can't do anything about it. You can't run but from it. It always comes. Being second only to, to Smash is not a, a bad thing. Yeah, not bad at all. And I think like that NetherRealm Studios is... It's funny that they're just so widely like written off just like from the back of hand because of their games but i really do think it's commendable to think of like one dude one studio has been continuously working on this because they like people don't remember this but before street fighter 4 came out fighting games were fucking dead no one was really releasing them and there was no real because mainly because capcom themselves killed it because they released so many different versions of street fighter so there was a good period of time where like Street Fighter 3 was out, but, like, nobody was... It wasn't the same excitement levels of Street Fighter 2. Fighting games were kind of come, were kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of coming out, but you weren't seeing them a bunch. It was very much, like, they became a genre that just was not really made that much of. If you did get them, you got something like Smash Brothers or you got Tekken. And... Nether Realm, the Nether Realms, the people behind it just kind of kept making Mortal Kombat games. And they were just like, no, this is a fighting game. And there might be weird spinoffs, but we're just going to continue making this game and doing whatever we can for whatever the current market demands of us. And I think that's kind of commendable in its own way. Even uh, Miyamoto eventually stopped working on Mario games. So that's how I feel. Miyamoto also is so old, I don't think he knows how to play video games anymore. I think, uh, you know, well, Miyamoto also does a thing of, like, they ask him, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm really uh, checking out my garden. And they're like, okay, I think we can make that a video game. Let's make Pikmin. <laughs> Remember, I, I will never forget that that one stream where he was demoing uh, either Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword on the Wii. I don't remember which one. And it was just a fucking mess. Oh yeah, it was it was a Skyward Sword. It, none of the motion controls were working. Right, and he like looks so lost, like an old man. Yeah, but he does have the best bit in there where he starts going like nothing's working, and he starts going oh, oh. He just starts making noises as he's moving the <laughs> fucking Wii boat. <laughs> he also uh, is. You get asked. It's funny because I think you talked about this before. Uh, someone interviewed um, Miyamoto. And said, "Who's uh, who's uh, Bowser Junior's mom?" And then he pointed to himself, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he doesn't like continue onward with that. He's just very clearly like just fucking with people now, <laughs> which is that. Makes I still the, think I, it's crazy that they made a Mario game where Bowser Junior says, "Peach is my mom," and Peach isn't like, "No, I'm not." 
Like, obviously she isn't, because they admit she isn't at the end, but it's very weird to me that she, like, considers it. Like, Mama Peach? Like, if you watch that scene, it kind of makes it go, like, Peach, did you fuck Bowser at some point? <laughs> yeah, and and the, the implication of her not denying it is, like, did she have to think about it? Yeah, it's like, she's, like, doing, like, a, like, a, <laughs> you... did I give birth recently? <laughs> no, not this year. Oh, but he's not a one-year-old. How old are you, boy? <laughs> I need to know your age. <laughs> I need your age before I can say anything about that. That Mario is going like, oh, come on. <laughs> Mamma mia. And then it's bullshit because of that, you know, we could do an entire thing on Super Mario Sunshine and it's fucking story and how it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, I love Mario Sunshine, though. I'll play the shit out of that. Mm. That that's That's my game, like, opinion where everyone conflicts with me. Because for some reason, people fucking hate that game. I love Mario Sunshine. I don't hate Mario Sunshine, but I have a weird thing with Mario Sunshine where I just never felt it was as good as I wanted it for some reason. But I also remember getting that game and immediately falling sick for some reason. So I think that's also kind of like putting my mind in a weird place. But yeah, Mario Sunshine is maybe the most contested Mario game out there for some reason. I don't fully understand. Yeah, it, people fucking hate Mario Sunshine, and I, I don't get it. I love that game. Yeah, I, I'm i definitely one of those people who don't like it, but I also recognize that it is a fantastic fucking video game because even a kind of bad Mario game in my mind and of the original of the platformers is still pretty good <laughs> compared to yeah, a lot of other stuff. Yeah, it's hard to make a game as simple as Mario bad. You have to really put some work in. Yeah. there's And that's the thing is that a lot of times, like, even when people go like, I don't like playing this, but I cannot deny the quality that is put inside of it. Like, right. It, it, there's obviously efforts. But yeah, that's a conversation for maybe another day <laughs> where we talk yeah, about... Yeah, we're getting full on into Mario right now. And poor, just like Mortal Kombat, the Mortal Kombat story always being overshadowed by a Japanese game. <laughs> So for anyone out there, I suggest you check out Mortal Kombat. You should also just in general check out the history of Mortal Kombat. It is an extremely fascinating one. There is no game out there that fucks with its fans as much as Mortal Kombat. There is also no game in the world that's uh, ever had a error glitch happen in a video game. And then they said, let's just make that error glitch a character. <laughs> Which they have done five times. <laughs> So thank you again, uh, thank you again, Zen, for joining me for another episode of Illegal Gaming Chop Shop. Why don't you? Of course. Uh, why don't you sign us off? Fuck, I never remember it. <laughs> okay, so let Shit. me just talk about some gaming moments while you look up the. I ah, uh, we need to do this more often so I get it in my head. <laughs> we need to like write it down. I need to put it down in like um. Uh, some kind of google doc no i need to put it inside the the description so i see it every day <laughs> so that i can remind you yeah yeah it's it's always just enough time for me to have completely forgotten what it is i'll find it though okay so let me talk about a little bit about what i've been playing uh, while you do that i don't really have a lot of other video game news i have been playing a bunch of uh, fake Grand Order because they're currently doing an event that's kind of like a raid style event. I'm also at the point where I kind of just want it to end. But the problem is it feels like the entire North American community also agrees with me and they've just stopped fucking attacking the thing that we need to kill. So this is not doing a very good thing of getting the thing dead. <laughs> so it just kind of stays at it's halfway dead and hopefully by... Uh, I mean, we only have like three days left, so like in a day or two, it will hopefully go down and we can continue on with the fucking story and move on with our lives, but, you know, we'll see. I've also been thinking about, while Zen is continuing to look at this, I'm just going to talk to the people out there. There's a sick part of me that wants to give Legends another try, because I keep thinking that maybe one day they're going to, uh, uh, like, they're going to announce an Aureli, and I'm going to have to go get legends and i'm gonna have to try and grind chrono crystals or whatever the fuck it's called and i feel like if i'm already on top of it i can get my Rayleigh, i can play with her for like a day and then i can say well i'm done with legends they released the greatest unit and i thank them for it and i'll send it off to the sunset but i also just don't have a lot of fun playing it so i don't know that's just kind of my current thoughts on the entire like legends thing i also have been uh, trying to, ch uh, because you know I'm interested in the game, I decided to check it out. 
and all I've been doing is been watching D3 summon videos of uh, Legends, which is like watching a man slowly die in front of me. I've never seen a man more unhappy to summon than D3 in his summons for Legends. It's literally like watching because he constantly has to uh, repeat the same phrase, which is like, by the way, these medals do nothing. People keep asking me about it. I'm a big whale, and I feel very sad every time he says it, because he says it almost every video. <laughs> okay, so I can't find it, but I think I remember it. Go ahead. I think it's, thank you for coming to the Illegal Gaming Chop Shop, where we talk nonstop shop about the cream of the gaming crop. That's it? Thank you, All everyone. right. <laughs> Goodbye. See, even with Fighter, I have to talk about Legends, <laughs> fucking fighting game. But Legends is good. You should you should tough it out until you get a feel for it, and then decide if you still don't like it. <laughs>